the human body is going to make 12 milligrams of oxalate per day, perhaps from a little bit of vitamin C breakdown, perhaps from amino acid turnover. Now, reading your book, it sounds like we know pretty clearly that the kidneys of the human body can handle 12 milligrams of oxalate and get rid of that per day. At what We're point? Yeah. <laughs> at what point? So that's the next question is, at what point do the kidneys start to get a little overloaded? What what are we talking about in terms of oxalate consumption? And then we can kind of segue into how much oxalate we're eating might get absorbed. And let's, let's start adding on a regular day for someone trying to be healthy. I did an Instagram reel really, really the other day where I talked about an, a smoothie. And in the smoothie, I put spinach and almond milk and some turmeric powder. And I think I put some chocolate in the smoothie too. And uh, I mean, <laughs> you know, you do the calculation. That's over, yeah, that's over a thousand milligrams of oxalate in my diet in the smoothie. So let's just walk people through like, okay, so if you're trying to be healthy and you're eating some of these high oxalate foods and you're adding on to that load in your human body, at what point does the kidney become overloaded and where do we go from there? Yeah. And, and we, we have to work backwards from the kidney, which is the last stop, right? You know, your bladder and urethra are the last stop for real. The whole urinary tract is in trouble because it has to concentrate the oxalate that it's trying to remove from the bloodstream. And that's a pretty tough job to have to do. Brilliant brilliant organ can do it. It's designed to handle it. It's got all the possible reduction it can have. And most of us don't even get kidney stones when we're overloading oxalate. But but the science has been focused only on the kidney stone aspect of the oxalate overload. And so we have 50 years of only worrying about nephrons and tubules and, <laughs> and nephrocalcinosis. And that, that's the, where the kidney itself is turning to rocks. It's not, you may not be getting stones in the tubules that block the flow of urine, but you can get, because one of the defense mechanisms of the kidney is to pull the crystals of oxalate that are forming in the urine out of the tubules so you don't block the flow of the releasing urine and you don't die of an infection because of blockage. So the kidneys like happily are, you know, under duress, eating and holding on to the oxalate. And in fact, this is probably going on in the other body parts as well. The vascular system doesn't like um, the flow of crystals in it either and prevents oxalate from being really high in the bloodstream and other tissues. So, and, and there, you know, there's a whole system where the capillary beds push oxalate into tissue. So all we know from a scientific side, really at this stage is how much the kidneys can handle, not how much your vascular system can handle or your liver or your gut we really have never asked those questions scientifically. So based on kidney function and most of us have redundant systems where we don't get stones. We produce these uh, proteins. There's many, many proteins designed to interrupt the building of calcium oxalate stones so that small little crystals can leave the tubules without um, blockages. And we per citrates out. And that's one reason why people say plants and plant-based is good for kidneys because it, it potentially can keep your system alkaline enough so that you can release citrate in the urine, which is another protective compound. In many ways, it has many uh, ways that it's helping protect us from stones. So even that, even knowing the kidneys can handle oxalate, the science suggests that you can only handle about 50 milligrams a day for the whole day long coming out of the kidneys. Now, 50 milligrams coming out of the kidneys would translate into eating 10 times that in food if your gut is not leaky. So if you have normal gut absorption level because the, the junctions between the cells in your gut are normal, because it just floats in between the cells, between these tight junctions, which I describe as like Velcro that holds the cells together, you can pour liquid through Velcro even when it's closed, right? Because there's lots of air gaps. That's what's happening. You're absorbing fluids that have these dissolved ions of oxalic acid and minerals and nutrients. So 10 times 50, well, wait a minute, half is coming from your endogenous production. So you only get 10 times 25 or 10 times 12, you know, depending on what your kidney health is. So 10 times 25, that's only 250 milligrams of oxalate in your diet. And your standard spinach salad is about 450 milligrams of oxalate. So you've doubled what a healthy gut can handle in one salad. Most people, they get a spinach salad going, it's like a daily thing they do for their lunch every day. It's, yeah, it's crazy. And then as we talked about it, and we'll get into this more in a moment, if you're overloading the kidneys, there's good data to suggest that oxalate is also ending up in other parts of your body, blood vessels, 
the brain, the neurologic system, uh, arteries, veins, um, you know, well, other. The blood vessels are so critical to your health. That's why we worry about heart disease, but they're also in the capillary beds. You're pushing out oxalate into critical tissues like your eyeballs. Your eyes tend to collect oxalate or get in trouble with oxalate very easily. For some reason, it's one of those tissues that are a magnet for oxalate. Breasts can be so, glands are so, especially the thyroid gland. Uh, anything with calcium in it, like your jaw and teeth and sinuses, uh, all these tissues can get collect oxalate. And we have rat studies that demonstrate that at least 4% of the oxalate that gets in your bloodstream ends up stuck in tissues after every meal. That's not good. <laughs> Can't be good. And I know that right because now you're collecting particles because what you're absorbing is the acid side of the, the two carbons with the charges on it, and that thing is the chelator that takes the minerals like the calcium out of your blood, which the heart and pacemaker really aren't cool with that. That you're sucking minerals out of your system and then forming these particulate nanocrystals, which are uber toxic. I mean, we talk about nanoparticles and their toxicity. Well, any kind of crystal like asbestos fibers and so on are really quite annoying to the immune system. And the immune system tries to do stuff to protect you and hide them. And if they can get rid of them, they will. But they certainly can't when you're eating them every meal. And you end up with the immune system doing this defensive kind of, and I describe it in my, in my book as like the, the Lucy and Ethel thing, where the body's playing defense like it's too much. There's too much work being asked of everybody. And the body has to like stash it in the back seat and wait for a moment to get rid of it later. Which we'll talk about dumping and what happens when you stop eating oxalates, which is really interesting yeah, as well. Which is why the carnivore diet has helped to reveal the oxalate problem because you yes. get off the plants, which are the main, the only real source of oxalates in your body. And then suddenly you've switched from a lifestyle of potatoes, peanuts, spinach, and junk, high oxalate stuff to a diet with none of it. And the body is like finally getting a chance to clean out this whole attic of, of yucky crystals. It's like when I was in high school, I wasn't very good. And the trunk of my car just gets full of more and more crap. And right. then eventually my mom opens the trunk of my car and goes, what is, yeah, and you have to clean out the trunk of your car. I mean, hopefully nobody listening to this, maybe some of you have trunks of your cars or garages that are full of garbage, but that, that's kind of what's happening in your body. 